hello everybody, welcome to the round of 64, season 45, CCL. We started with a perfect defence in this match between Leet and his Kemri, and Mr. Light and his Nurgle. In the booth with me is Purple Chest. Hello. Hello, hello. Uh, what a clash of two great titans, two classics of the Chalice era, uh, Mr. Light and 1337. Yeah. Um... It's it's wild. This this the Nurgle have a babe, thirteen players, loads of claw mighty and well not loads, two claw mighties and a claw palm. So they are quite a light Nurgle team actually. Uh, yeah, they are. At the first glance, it does look like a very standard Nurgle, and then you realise how incredibly thin it is, Jim. Um, yeah. It's got everything, but it hasn't got anything else really. Yeah. And then you look at this Kemri team, and they're lovely in some ways. There's some very nice development on the Tomb Guardians. Uh, we've got some block across three of the four, which is nice to see. Very, very hitting. No real bloat either. They haven't got too big. They haven't got too dead. Um, and then some really good support from the backfield too. There's a lot of guard on those skeletons. Um, and yet it's still Kemri, isn't it? And you still think, ah, any one of these Tomb Guardians goes, it's time to look worrying. And if two of them go, they've lost. Yeah, it is. And they haven't got Dirty Player. That's the one thing that they haven't yeah. got. There's no Dirty Player and there's only 13 players. So they they are a bit thin on numbers and very thin I mean, on... Yes, you suspect with this much Mighty Blow across all the Toon Guardians and on the Blitzrals and the, all the Guard that's been backing that up, they've controlled and sort of dominated their way up the field rather than fouled and sort of mesmerised or, or marmalised their way up the fields, haven't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> They've gone block fend on this uh, skeleton, mm. eschewing uh, shadowing. <laughs> Surprise! I suspect it because it starts on the line of scrimmage, Jim. Oh, okay. I would have liked to have seen shadowing on that skeleton, personally. <laughs> well, I would have liked to have seen it, but there's so many better choices, aren't there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't you find that every time you look at shadowing, you think, mm, maybe block, or guard, <laughs> or tackle, or kick. Oh, yeah. Any of the other good skills. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, Pwnebot realises this is all in good natured, but there you go. I hope so too. Yeah. Now, I didn't hate the position the beast was in, locking down the side sweep whilst also moving forwards to the other side of the field, but he's decided to move it in front of the uh, the wall of warriors. It's not a bad. Uh, sorry, behind the. Uh, in front of the wall of tomb guardians. Yeah. It's fine, but the problem is if you keep moving them, eventually one time it's going to fail, and then it gets left behind. <laughs> so it turns where it's in good places, uh, and it's doing good work. Perhaps try and look not to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would have just said where he was, because, you know, it, it can be really bad if he boneheads, can't he? If he well, not boneheads, uh, really stupids, then it, then he can open up a hole there, which could have... You know, could uh, be bot, for once I can genuinely say and I'm sure Jimmy would back me up you should watch the VOD uh, we were very positive about lots of the things you did Yeah. and really enjoyed your um, silly shadowing choice don't do it again but it was fun <laughs> but don't do it again <laughs> and hello Chunta Chunta summoned by the shadowing <laughs> whenever anyone says horrible things about dwarves they should know I'm there <laughs> oi <laughs> Good, Pumbot. Well, it's it's nice when we can be. I mean, I thought that lots of your play was really, really good, given the situation you were in. As I hope, I continuously said. Yeah, it was rough, wasn't it? Real rough. I thought it was going to be. I yeah. just thought it was going to be a nothing game. That's why I didn't do it live. Yeah, absolutely. But it wasn't. It was. It was really interesting. Yeah. And you could see the belief draining out of the elf play. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sit shadowing three times because Chunter will appear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, moves in the beast. Is he going to get a hit? Yes. No, he's not, because that was only two assists. Unless he gets a guard around the back. Has he got a guard around the back? He just, like, this is the thing, right? You just can't hit the bloody uh, Tomb Guardians most of the time, can you? Yeah. He could, he could have put guard in the front two here and then gone one, two, three, four, five. So that would have been a GFI, though. Here, if he's going to engage, he needs to pick his engage moment really carefully because it's going to be brief and bad, brutal. And these guardians really want you to come toe to toe and engage with them. Mm. And you can 
just see them as a sort of band of West Ham fans circa 1984 marching down the road going, come on then if you think you're hard enough. Oh yeah, you could have just hit there. Well, what did you do with the club? Oof. I was thinking, I don't know why I was thinking of coming around there and I didn't even see that. It's funny, isn't it? Sometimes like how you do tunnel vision, like obviously... Yeah. Uh, Newm's obviously tunnel visioned on that turn, you know, where he could have, uh, he needed the catch it to, to recover. Yes. And he, and he just did something completely different, and he was probably tunnel visioned at that, didn't he? And, and didn't even contemplate yeah. what he should have done. No, he saw the isolated Guardian, saw a way to do it, and didn't think, is there a better way? Just thought, okay, let's make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for going around. <laughs> and indeed the Camry are just you know rolling space by space pace by pace down this flank yeah but are the claw palm hits gonna come mm. thick and fast at some point surely surely he's gonna get to make the hits at some point well he's taken that profit skeleton yep And he could come in, he could come in here. He's not going to. Kemri Aaron. He's, he's, he's after all the Tomb Guardians, Jim. Yeah. It is annoying that it is so hard to claw from the Guardians. Then obviously if you do claw yeah. from them, not this team, but most Kemri teams are going to have 15 players and a dirty player. And they will foul you if you pile on them as well. So so yep. not only have you got you're struggling to pile on them, you're also struggling to actually pile on them safely. Yeah, slightly opposite to the Lizards here. If I was claw palming this team, um, I think I would probably try and take out a skeleton or two first, just to give me that edge to be able to outnumber the uh, the Tomb Guardians. Hmm, it's tricky. But of I course, mean, sometimes you, know, you go in with a plan, you have to deal with what actually happens, don't you? Yeah, I mean, usually that's what you've got to do because it is just yeah. so hard to hit the Tomb Guardians. <laughs> but actually, he's done a very good job of keeping the skeletons you know, useful but, but safely defended. And these four Tomb Guardians are dominating the entire field right now. Mm. I usually try to like pick off the dirty players first because then once you've got yeah. the dirty player, then you can actually then you can actually pile on the, the two guardians. But it's just tough. Sometimes you just get so few opportunities to hit them, you've got to take them and stuff. It is it is tricky. He is doing a very nice job here of driving behind three of them and using just the other one to keep so much of this Nurgle team out of the picture. You know, the hugely important beast, but one of the warriors too. Well, he might be out of look now. <laughs> yeah. He might be out of look now. He's finally realised he can claw pom him. <laughs> and hence he has drawn the claw pom. Oof. I think that's as much about getting those players some chance of getting out of there. Yeah. He's still in the way, isn't he, more or less? But I wonder if we're going to go in hard this turn. Or if he'll wait one more turn. But he's he's got to go in hard eventually, hasn't he? Yeah, this or next turn, it's, it's full contact, base, 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 isn't it? And it does look like it is going to be this turn, Jim. You've called it. Or are we just trying to monster that one warrior? Hmm... That's skillless, isn't it? It's the one behind that has the claw mighty. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so we are. We're just taking on the rookie. Okay, well, I like that. I do a lot of that. But it takes a lot of support to get that active and hitting. Uh, it's unlikely to dodge off, or if it does, reasonable chance it fails. And it just gives them a worry all of their turn. They're thinking, what do I do about that easy hit they've got? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that that's simplistic just fucking around, but it is it is quite true. Like it's it's not all down to the like no. it's not all down to that, but it is it is often quite <laughs> it is often quite uh, quite relevant, like particularly early removals. Ooh, that was weird, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it's a very huge factor, but if you, it's not the only factor. Yeah. I wonder what his play was there. Like, obviously, it was some kind of chain, but I didn't know. It was. I, I, again, I'm looking for it, and I'm not. 
instantly seeing it. I mean, it could just have been, if I can get them all huddled up on the edge this turn, there'll be, you know, problems and possible serves next turn. Foul appearance kicking in. Oof. All the one in nines. No knockdown. <laughs> <laughs> well, shouldn't he have gone in front there so he could have cl cleared this no glory out quite like that I quite like pushing him there and then and then clearing the guard out. yeah yeah I see what you mean yeah oh to do their skulls another one it's in one in nine now to some observers this has a sort of Enzo feel to it I'm sure <laughs> the difference here is it just feels like we're on the on the Teetering on the brink of one of these teams just destroying the other one, and it could be either way. Yeah, yeah which that probably means there'll be about one more injury this entire. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a nightmare turn, absolutely. Wasn't it just? But now we are where we hope to get to. We are fully engaged. We're in a war. Oh, yeah. And the Nurgle are backing off from it, Jim. Yeah. They, they don't like it. They don't want it up them. Yeah. Can he, can he punch through this diagonal, maybe? Yes. I mean, surely that's... I don't... It's a tricky. Very tricky. Um, no, I don't think he can. I think it's still all safe. Boy, howdy. Okay, then one more hit, and there is a... Kazazim. Sort of gap. Kind of forming. Yeah. Pow, this is oh, the big one, know, isn't it? The I think we've given one. ourselves a gate dodge here, Jim. <laughs> oh, he does the 1D. Dude, why, dude? Why, you've got spit? Player, <laughs> did just put him in there and... I mean, now now he's got cover for it, hasn't he? But yeah, yeah, okay, yes. And had it been a power, we'd have loved the fact that he had a spare skeleton to run through with the ball carry. But the fact that it was no block against block... It's still not enough, is it? But no. it, yeah, I mean, it might be. It's a blodge piece, except it's a tackle. He's got to assist now, except it's a strength four with horns hit, so one assist is enough. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. It does basically literally nothing having that guy. Absolutely <laughs> nothing at all. I mean, running him round, do you know where he should be, Jim? He should be around the corner tagging the strength four. Yes, yeah. That's where he's useful. Yeah. You can also just double um, Geofan. I don't know if that would have got him safe or not. No, it wouldn't. But it would, at least he would have had to trade Geofies to get to him. But obviously he couldn't make the Geofies because he'd use the reroll on the 1D. Still, it's you, you risk it. If it fails, it fails. If it gets there, hurrah. Yeah. Oh, pushes. As, as you can see. Wow. <laughs> yeah, him being there did not stop or even... I mean, it altered the slight direction of that blitz, but it didn't make it any harder at all. However, it has given you a piece that could recover feasibly, so let's let's call that what it gave you. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Didn't do that then either, but still. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, blimey, something else needs to blitz that off. So why did... And then we have to dodge. I think we're screwed, aren't we? Oh, two heads. He's got a... Okay. He's got yeah. a two plus. No, I was thinking from the Camry's perspective. All oh, right. Oh yeah, the Camry. Of if we didn't fetch, did they have options? And the answer was only really with two guardians dodging. No. Yeah. Yeah. It was bad, bad news. Bad news for the Cams. Well, Jim. I mean, you called when they went rowdy. I thought it was the right time, but they had a turn of doom. Yeah, they did, yeah. And from there, it's just led to their downfall. Uh, the potato had to be tried, but it didn't work. Uh, I think when that second uh, throw up pushed through, it really needs to tag up the blitz that came. But even if they had, you know, the piece that picked it up now was just as capable of getting there and doing the hit. Yeah. Oh, poor Camry. There's a oh, chance. I didn't realise we had a Gnoring threat in. Yeah, there's a chance. We've got a sexy wrestle rotter. No. Good. Yeah, he did made it out of himself exactly, Doctor Dog. Yeah, that was a bit of a 
if 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 that had been done, yeah, like all th- if everyone yeah. was like four squares over, <laughs> it would have been a lot better. I liked him at the start because he gave him a real sharp focus of three Tomb Guardians at the front. But yes, he absolutely needed to find a time to centralise that drive, giving him more options for the scoring moments towards the end. There's a claw pump. There's nothing. <laughs> Two claw pump guardian hits, absolutely nothing. Yeah, just fucking around. They just, this team hasn't got it right. They only have 13 men, so they could just couldn't really utilize that. But normally, normally, Kemri are coming in at like 14, 15, maybe even 16 players with two or three dirty players and fouling every turn. Carlo yep. Pelagatti style. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what a legend. Or Busco Pads with Enka Predatori, if you remember that. I don't, but I. I love Carlos, so I had to mention him. <laughs> well, I mean, Busco was I mean, a little less foully, but a lot more aggressive in his play. Mm. Had a huge Kemri team that just used to beat people to hell and then foul them off the pitch like crazy. <laughs> but without the sort of fun and joy that Carlo brings. Yeah, Carlo's the best. Hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious guy. If the Scully had shadowing that, Rotter would never score a very good point, Enzo. <laughs> yes, I mean, the, the Nurgle got the stop despite not removing anybody, so there you go. Kind of proving the point about the removals not being the biggest thing. They actually got. Oh. <laughs> they lost a Nurgle warrior. Um. They got rid of a blodge thrower right at the end, and uh, they stopped it just kind of positionally, right? It is, yeah. And uh, they definitely weren't guilty of overblocking. Mm -hmm. you know, when they had positions to just hit, 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 there were times they prioritised getting good defences up, being in the right shape, uh, and that paid off. But it, it, it also took a, you know, just when things were looking a little dodgy for them, there was that horrific turn of dice for the camera. Yeah, yeah like dice are always going to be a big factor, aren't they? And yeah. Like, yeah. Especially the closer the coaches are as well, isn't it? You know, like yeah. if, you've, if you've got, say, PTK and PC, um, then, then, you know, if it takes less severe dice for one of them to dice the other. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, like, if... Uh, if Yes, you if, would hope that smaller advantages would be taken advantage of more ruthlessly, I think is what you're trying to say. Exactly, it? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas, like, if my mum was playing PTK, she could dice him and still lose. <laughs> yes, yeah, he could make three or four mess-ups and still probably still feel fairly confident of, of taking her down. I mean, your mum's not at the peak of her powers, has it, for few years. <laughs> But there's still possible, it's still possible that if every single hit was a kill. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah. As soon as anyone knows the absolute basics, they can win any game of Blood Bowl. There's yeah. a good chance they don't at times, but they can. Yeah. Even your dear old mum. And I'm just celebrating inwardly that I managed to do a mum joke there and it was entirely clean. <laughs> yes, well done. Well I know, done. I liked it. And it was amusing and fun and wasn't filthy. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> well, that's how you remove things, Jim. Yep, that, that is a removal. <laughs> dead, dead, dead. <laughs> and I mean, that was the obvious thing to hit as well, right? Because there was a gaping hole if you took that down. The, these yeah. guys were. Yeah, bit, absolutely. It was, he needed something else to hold it, so he, that, we, that was always going to attract the hit. Although I can understand it from uh, from Nurgle's point of view. Usually when they leave a beast of Nurgle somewhere, everyone goes, right, I'm avoiding that. <laughs> but of course, they're not strength five with mighty blow and stand firm and guard and all those other lovely things that Tomb Guardians come with. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly, Penamir. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? That is the thing. So ultimately, yes, the dice are going to have a big effect. But... It's and, and and unfortunately, it is a lot easier for the dice to decide the game when it's two good coaches because then there's less gap in skill, so they can't make up for the gap in dice as easily. Yeah, I I, I kind of know what I'm thinking. 
I am indeed just fucking around. Uh, it always makes me mindful of my favorite of the Mother Jones, which I believe was Les Dawson, but it may be someone else. He said, uh, it's a mother-in-law joke, that specific and lovely subset. My mother-in-law got run over the other day. Oh, why? Why? It's because she's fat. What? Did the lorry... Yeah, no, the lorry had the room to get around. He just didn't have the petrol. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, makes the hand up. That was, a, that was a bold move, wasn't it? I guess he thought that was an overcommit there. With yeah. Three I, things. With, yes, and I, I kind of think he's right. He's got three of the Tomb Guardians right the other side of the field. It, it's given him that extra space and movement that means this push down the left is now genuinely on. And of course, with Kemri being so slow, Jim, if he can get in even with leaving them, say, three turns, I'm usually happy to do that against Kemri, aren't you? Yeah, but what do you think you should have re-rolled that foul appearance? Because without that, that that stops this this tomb guardian yeah. getting in, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, well, okay, no, it doesn't. He's gonna blitz and then just he move, blitz and but... move him. Okay, that's a uh, that's fine. It keeps your reroll safe. You certainly had to reposition one. Yeah. So I think if that had been another foul appearance, I would have re-rolled it there. Yeah. Uh, but I think it was all right to leave the first one. Way hey, oh, yeah. but but are they already too far out? Well, I mean, I was just thinking that as no good. You're hoping they're not they're not relevant. I think that would secure my intention even further to just zoom down this side and get this ball in whilst I still have it. That's why I really like that. That's why I really like that reroll because if you reroll that, then you're blitzing this rotter and you're basing yeah. this claw pommer, and then this claw pommer can't do this <laughs> to get you. To get your guy down and, and move being the screen. Well, you can't do it as easily. Oh my god, just fucking around. Jesus Christ almighty. I mean, just do 10 minutes. Wow, well, I missed whatever that was, but I'm slightly glad I did from the vocal tone. Let's move on. Yeah. Jesus. Right. <sighs> anyway, um <laughs> That was pretty good, Penemu. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not heard that one, but I didn't like that one too. Oh, is he gonna try and chain to get the no. Like is he what I mean Okay, yeah, you can just blitz that way. I was thinking you could have like tried to chain to get this tomb guardian there and then block and then get him free, but it's much easier just to blitz him and then get this one in. But you can yeah, still I score. Think he's he gonna, I exactly. I think he's going to stand in front of it and hope that that works. Yeah. Which... But he's, he's just going to score, I think. Yeah. Just okay. Well, it's Kemri, isn't it? It's Kemri. You want to look? Yeah, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I yeah, I would. I think Kemri cannot afford to give up easy scores and just assume they're going to score back. Yeah, exactly. Like, and, and I'm much more happy to take like an easy score against Kemri because like they can jam you in with strength five and everything, and and also yeah. you can just make them make a dodge, and they're already <laughs> unlikely to score. <laughs> so. I'll tell you what, Regen's been pretty huge for the Kemri, hasn't it? it, it well, imagine yeah. them trying to trying to defend without those two players, and it looks a bit bleaker. Huge. Yeah, and he just instantly goes in. Instantly. Yeah, straight in. Lovely. Yeah, that's that's that is the that is the bad thing about Kemri and everyone knowing that you've got a really good defense and a really bad offense because they will take those opportunities and and trust in their defense to stop. Them. <laughs> just isn't that unlikely, is it? They give you five turns, they're not going to score. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and that's before you even look at what resources you're using to stop them. It just isn't likely. It's it's tough for them against anything at all. If you took everything else off the field and just put them on again in four turns, it's not certain they'd get there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so five turns against any kind of defence, you've got to think, yeah, all right, my money's on the defence. Yeah. It, re it reminds me of this, uh, there's a great, there's a great, uh, 
there's a great YouTube guy, I can't remember his name, but he like does like mixed martial arts and stuff. And uh, he, he like he was he was doing, you know, these idiotic self defense things techniques. Yep. And he said and he said, Right, this is this is the video and he goes, Now let let's uh, let's test it against the ultimate the ultimate challenge, minimal resistance. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then obviously none of them work <laughs> and that is the thing isn't it and, and a Kemri offense against minimal resistance is uh, is pretty tough <laughs> yeah <sighs> hello G'day Nick I mean you know you, you can see what he's saying right G'day Nick there's no need to be there's no need to be toxic but like you know, often often removals do decide a game, don't they? And especially early ones. And and you know, it's 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 a huge it's a huge element of chance that is very very impactful for sure. Like yes. you know, yeah, it is. But again, yeah, always race and context dependent. Yeah, and players uh, always going to have that. Yeah, slaughter sort of three pro elves in the first turn, and they're they're very used to it. It doesn't massively alter their planning, but do it again in the second and third turn. Okay, the two remaining elves have problems. <laughs> yeah, if a, if a rock hits hits Daedal's dancer before the game starts, <laughs> yep. could be rather yeah, impactful. Remove, <laughs> remove one dwarf, and the dwarves are already worrying. It's, it, it can be huge. But I, I do know when people say it's the only factor that matters, it's it's not. It's just not. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's it's probably the biggest factor, right? Early cars, early yeah. cars is probably yeah. the biggest factor because it's just instantly putting you on the back foot, and mentally as well, it's putting you on the back foot because already you know, like you know, uh, oh, whoever it was, he he was down to eight players, and it's sort of like instantly, and it's like already, it's really hard, isn't it? That was me. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, you were second half. You were second half, PC. <laughs> it's Yes, if I was to put my Elliot voice on and analyse it in an intellectual way, like a doctorate person who makes robots would. Um, <laughs> it's not, you know what I mean? It's, uh, yes, it, you'd have to weigh how important the event is and also their occurrence rate, wouldn't you? Because, you know, a blitz is possibly the most important impact on an early game state, but they're less common than an early removal is. Yeah. Um, but I, if you say, the, I mean, I'm prepared to stand by the statement that probably early removals are the biggest factor in winning Blood Bowl games. Yes, it's probably true. Yeah, it is. It is, a, it is a big swing. Oh, there you go. There's a removal. Uh, honestly, that's the, that's one of the things I was thinking about. If I was thinking about like trying to make Blood Bowl a better game. I thought about one thing you could do would be to have stuff like, you know, orcs, like, just wouldn't get their armor broken on, like, the first two or three knockdowns or whatever, you know, like, however yeah. many. Yeah. And and so that that would be guaranteed, that, like, orcs, you just couldn't break the armor for the first four blocks, whereas uh, wood elves could get their armor broken straight away. And, you yeah, know, you, I found that quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. You, you could fudge everything around and everything, and, and blah blah blah. But that would be like the basic principle of it, so that like, because at the moment, you know, orcs are play are paying for a chance of their armor working, whereas, you know, humans get their movement six. You know. Yes. Yeah. That's I mean, I was thinking perhaps you should you know you could balance that. Obviously, balancing would be a nightmare. It always is when you change things. But you know, perhaps elves could make their first dodge, for example. Yeah. Yeah, you know there are ways that you could balance it in, but to give the I don't like the term bash, you know, the high strength, high armor based coaches, and just that little bit more reliability that what they are banking on does get them into the game. Yeah, because you're like me, you have coached dwarf games where by the end of turn one you're looking at eight dwarves and you're thinking, well then this is an hour of my time that is wasted. Yeah. I can put every trick I know, and I might be able to fight back into it for a draw, but it's unlikely. Yeah. Other people would, of course, say it should be like that sometimes. Ooh, another big removal there. There's your Tomb Guardian gone to a... Huge. A regen is set to on for this game, though. That's happening for both sides, it seems. Yeah. Wow. 1D. 
goes for the 1D, cuts in the reroll as well. Wow, did he know that was a 1D? Do you think? Do you think he? Uh, do you think he just looked at strength five and he had two assists and he thought, oh, this is a 2D? Or do you think? I <laughs> 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 do you think he? Uh, he um, I do know. I'm going to credit him and say, let's say he did know it was one die. <laughs> Having got the removal, it was worth high rolling, and even the push was good. So a three plus was fine there. Yeah, and I guess it depends how confident you think you are of stopping the score as well, right? Like, because he's three, he's three two down on on re rolls before he makes that block. So you know, like, if you're going to put in the re roll, you're basically sacrificing all your kick equity, aren't you? So like, it's going I, two. I, yeah, I don't think you could have put the re-roll in, could you? I mean, it's a blockless piece, though, so a one or a two was terrible. But he it? did. He did put the re-roll in. That's the thing. Oh, did he mean I miss it? Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, wow. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. yeah. No, don't love that. Then I, I think you can do it, but not re-roll it. Mm. Yeah, it was very rowdy, the, the re-roll. I, I didn't enjoy the re-roll, but... But then, on the other hand, <laughs> if, you, if you win in normal time, then you win, don't you? Yes. Then you don't need any more rerolls at all. You've won the game. Yeah, exactly. SCP. Like I've, I've thought about something like that could be possible. Like obviously on on PC, lots of different things can be possible that you could never do on tabletop, right? Like you could make yeah. D10s instead of D6s, and, and on all things like that to make things, you know, more, more reliable. But I just find the biggest thing is like you know dwarves. And orcs with like they get fucked on the movement, don't they? And like agility is different because obviously agility can might just agility gives you a chance. So agility isn't guaranteed to be agility for right, but like, but it does give you the the freedom of trying it. But movement is movement. Like movement and strength are the only ones that are actually real stats, aren't they? If you if you kind of get what I'm talking about. <laughs> Movement is always the, the right movement, and strength is always the right mo strength. But agility and armor only only nudge the odds. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I see that. I mean, I'm always in the difficult position of I I like all these ideas, but I you know I like the game as it is. So yeah, I always go. But why do we need that? Why a D10 instead of a D6? And someone explains it, and I go, oh, that all makes sense to me. Yeah. And then the next time I roll a D6, I go, but this sort of feels fine to me. Well, yeah, yeah, like that's obviously like uh, the the main thing would be like if for some bizarre reason you wanted to make it a computer game that was you know a bit better as a game. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm not against that. I'm not against taking the rules of Blood Bowl, throwing them out the window, and saying, okay, let's build that, but with better systems. Yeah. Um, that would be fine with me. That's, you know, I mean, it's sort of what they tried to do with Chaos League football, except it was hilarious and fun, but that. Yeah. Is he going to 1D dodge score here? I don't I, understand what his plan is. No idea, but I, I mean, no, I don't think we're going this turn is my answer. Mm -hmm. I think we're securing how we are, where absolutely we are. This is weird, isn't he? He's split off his two guardians this time, and it's like yeah. he's got to get We're back and use these two, yeah. but he hasn't got time. Yeah. So. No, he hasn't got time. Mm. And the beast has moved into a beautiful position for it. Um, it I, yeah, I'm not sure how we get this done. I, we had to find a way forwards there, and right? we didn't find it. Wow. Yeah, and instead we've stabilised in a place I didn't think was safe, and it absolutely isn't. If we're going to be unsafe, be unsafe further forwards. Mm. So that the ball's near where you need it to be when it goes wrong. It was it's, it's such a simple tip if anyone's fairly new and watching. If you're definitely going to go wrong, get towards where you want to be. Because then if you sort it out, it's much more likely to be a good thing. Jesus Christ. Christ, Evdy, someone's just literally been timed out for 10 minutes for a joke, and then you go, what joke? I mean, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, Enzo. Jesus Christ. Man. It just, that, that, if you, if you, I just don't understand how you can not think that's too strong a joke, but there you go. But, you know, good for Andy and Zunk. But that, that for me, was, was just definitely, definitely too far. Oh, God, this is... This is real bad now for the... For the, uh, camera unit. 
Yeah. I... I mean, where did this one all go wrong? I mean, it was the turn that the Tomb Guardian got removed, the other one got pushed off, but because he got pushed off, there was a chance to reposition it. And I, I felt we sort of missed that, that Tomb Guardians both stayed centrally and where they've not helped this drive forwards so much. Well, he's done the same drive as he did in the first half, except the first yeah. half he had three Tomb Guardians in front and one over here, and this time he had one in front and two over here. <laughs> That's substantially worse, isn't it? <laughs> and if you remember, that much stronger drive in the first half, Jim, didn't work, did it? Exactly, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. that still failed, yeah. And this one's worst worked less. Yes. Um, so I think there's some advice we can... Uh, very definitely hand out to lead as if you do one thing and it fails utterly. <laughs> Perhaps next time try something else. That's just. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, I, it's I, hard difficult to, to know to suggest exactly what that is. Kemri is so terrible at moving forwards. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it is really tough with Kemri to score like, really against tough. people who are really trying tough. to stop you scoring. <laughs> Like things can happen, that, like you know, they, they can cause massive casualties. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and we haven't really had a chance to do that. We we tried to put our tomb guardians up in people's faces, and the Nurgle have been very restrained and at times played like the elves, haven't they? Yeah, a little bit. We saw some Pestigora and Rotter dodging off rather than taking hits that were offered to us, or just standing in the way and taking hits. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think Mr. Light's played this pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did play. He did play very well. He did get more armor bricks and won the game. So there you go. He, he had the nice dice, but he used them well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Well played by him. Congratulations, Mr. Light. Commiserations, Leet. Um, thank you very much, PC. As always, absolutely wonderful of you to come on here. And, and, and... A thrilling joy. Oh. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.